Please subscribe Sporta TV for more information, MotoGP and Formula 1 2024. Jack Miller has distanced himself from becoming a MotoGP test rider next year. Miller is still seeking a bike for the 2025 MotoGP rider lineup with his options dwindling. The KTM factory rider knows he will be replaced at his current manufacturer but doesn't want to take a step away from full-time racing. For the moment, I can't even put myself in that realm because I don't think of myself as a test rider, Miller was quoted by Motorsport. I enjoy this too much, I enjoy racing. I don't enjoy the testing side of it, I do it because I enjoy the work because you are working towards a goal. But in terms of just going round and round in circles on a motorcycle doesn't excite me. Going out there and competing with 22 other bikes is what I'm here for. Who knows for the future, but all I want to do is race. KTM, last year, demoted Paul Espargaro from a full-time race seat to becoming a test rider. They also have Danny Pedrosa in that role. Miller has been critical of how KTM handled his exit insisting he was originally told not to bother speaking with rival brands because his future would be sorted. But, Miller says, he then received a phone call three hours before the public confirmation that there would be no room for him next season. KTM have named Pedro Acosta in his place, alongside Brad Binder, next year. The Tech 3 KTM team have signed Maverick Vinales and Ania Bastianini, despite Miller's willingness to move across to their garage. Now, Miller is on the hunt for a new team. There are vacancies at Grazzini Ducati, Trackhouse Aprilia, and the new Pramac Yamaha project. But competition is stiff with a host of current riders out of work, and several Moto2 talents hoping for a step up. Fabio Di Antonio's predicted new VR46 Ducati deal would also mean he is out of the running to lead the new Pramac Yamaha MotoGP project for 2025. Factory Yamaha star Fabio Quartararo praised Dig Gia on the eve of the Saxenring weekend, touting the Italian and a rookie such as Sergio Garcia or Alonso Lopez as among his choices for the new factory-backed Pramac seats. Thanking Quartararo for his words, Dejan Antonio made clear he had a plan A, plan B and even plan C for 2025. It soon became apparent that plan A is remaining with VR46 but being upgraded to a factory spec bike and direct Ducati contract. Which is your favorite bike? Plan A is for sure to continue this project, Dejan Antonio said at the German MotoGP. But in case we don't have this opportunity, for any reason, or in case we don't have the right project with this team, I have plan B, plan C. But for sure the goal is to continue, at VR46. We will negotiate in the next weeks. Ducati CEO Claudio Domenicali confirmed they are close to an agreement, telling Sky Italia, Diggia is a writer we like a lot, with VR46 we are working to bring home this goal. I think he has grown a lot, so we would be happy if we could keep him. We are also close, which is a good thing. Assuming that Di Gian Antonio Ducati is done, Pramac and Yamaha needs to find another proven rider. Race-winning MotoGP riders still to be officially confirmed for 2025 are Alex Rins, 6 wins, Miguel Oliveira, 5 wins, Jack Miller, 4 wins, Franco Morbidelli, 3 wins, and Joan Mir, 1 win, 1 MotoGP title. Assuming Rins stays with the factory Yamaha team, Morbidelli won't return to an M1 and that Joan Mir completes his priority of a new Repsol Honda deal, that list is then reduced to Oliveira or Miller. While Miller is a former Pramac rider and still on very good terms with the team, Oliveira made a timely return to form with a front-row start and sprint podium for Trackhouse Aprilia in Germany. The Portuguese also has the backing of Quartararo. He's one of my best mates in MotoGP. He's doing a really great job, especially, at Saxenring. And I think he's a really experienced rider. He won already quite a lot of races. So he can also be a really good rider for the Pramac project. Meanwhile, the former factory KTM rider remained tight-lipped on his future plans. You always try to look ahead to the future and what tools can you have versus the tools you have in the current moment, Oliveira said at Saxenring. As for now, I just want to enjoy the rest of the weekend and then think about what is to come. Pressed on why he had enjoyed such a sudden transformation in form on the RSGP24 in Germany, Oliveira, who also finished 6th and top non-Ducati in the Grand Prix, added. 
I think everything is just clicking together, the track, and the approach we did this weekend on trying not to touch too many things on the bike, just working on the suspension and electronics. I've been able to get out the maximum of my riding style. Also, the fact that Alix is not racing means we have some extra eyes, factory staff from Aprilia, looking into our things. I can't say that's the main reason, but for sure, it's always a help. Oliveira has now climbed to 13th in the World Championship, with Miller in 16th for Red Bull KTM. On the other hand, Raul Fernandez is keeping a lid on his expectations ahead of an upgrade to the 2024 Aprilia RSGP from the next MotoGP round at Silverstone. The trackhouse rider has been the only Aprilia competitor left on the 2023 spec machine this season. But that hasn't stopped him from qualifying on the front row twice, in Catalonia and Germany. Barcelona saw Fernandez fall from the lead of the sprint, then claim sixth in the race, but his strong qualifying counted for far less at the Saxenring. Rising front tire pressure saw Fernandez drop to 14th in the sprint, before completing his final race on the RSGP 23 with 10th in the Grand Prix. There was a mistake. For some reason it was not the correct pressure to get the maximum potential of the tire, Fernandez said on Saturday evening. But we are a team, we win or lose together and also they gave me a good bike to qualify on the front row. But rear tire grip proved the limiting factor in the Grand Prix. For the first 15 laps I was there, fighting with all the Ducatis and Miguel, said Fernandez, who was directly behind Oliveira in 8th during the middle stages. But the last 15 laps to the end I had a lot of problem with the tire. It is also, to do with, the 2023, bike. The pace was quite slow. But anyway, I did the maximum and we finished the top 10. I had a nice fight with Pedro, Brad, and Marco. But I didn't have anything to try to overtake them. But always when you fight with the people like them you always can improve. Fernandez now looks to the future and a race debut on the 2024 RSGP. Although his engine spec will be unchanged, due to the homologation rules, Fernandez, like Oliveira, is expected to receive a new 2024 mid-season aero update for the British GP. But performance-wise, he doesn't expect a night and day difference. It is not one second faster, Fernandez said of the 24 bike, which he briefly tried at the Harace test in April. But maybe when we had to save the tire, with the new bike it's easier. I tried it in just one test for two runs, so I don't know what I can expect. But, surely, if Aprilia have this new bike it's because they saw something positive. Also the lap times compared with last year are quite strong. So yeah, I believe that the new bike is a little bit better, but for sure it's not one second faster. <laughs>